I would say for the four stroke, the most unreliable engine is definitely the carbureted four strokes. Like just any one Mercury. Yamaha, yeah, done. Doesn't, doesn't I mean, there for a long time, or well, not a long time, but you had the Mercury and Yamaha had a deal with each other, and like you had, I mean, they call them the Mercaha, Yamaha, Merc, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, those had all kinds of problems. Like the a carbureted four stroke is just a bad idea because if you put the engines, if you, when you put them away like there's all kinds of sinking that you have to do between the carburetors in order to get all four of the cylinders or however, you know, whatever it is to, to on, on the most ones that I'm talking about are the four cylinders. Um, you had four individual carburetors and they all had to be synced together. Like they had to be pulling the same amount of vacuum and you had to hook them up to a vacuum mate and sync them together. So if someone put the boat away for a season, when they pulled it back out, you had all these problems with the carburetors. And it was a pain because you had to pull all four of them off. They had these electronic enrichners on them, and those things are stupid expensive. So if you had one of those go bad, you're out five hundred bucks. And then you had to, yeah, they're stupid expensive. And so they had, you know, TPS sensors on them that would go bad Um, on the Merker, like the Merkaha ones. Those were inverted, so like the way the TPS read was backwards the way the Mercury computer read it and the Yamaha computer read it. Yeah, I remember that. They would just have wear, and then they would just get, as soon as they came out of sync, the engine just would, they would have trouble idling, you'd lose wide open throttle, they'd just be all kinds of problems because you'd have one individual cylinder Mm -hmm. that was either running lean, rich, whatever the case may be, and it would just take so much work to get the thing to run right. And then... How often would you have to sync and link them? Some people got lucky, but most people had to do it, you know, every other year. I mean, it just depends on, it goes back to the neglect and abuse mm-hmm. um, and, you know, poor fuel quality. As far as four strokes go, were there ever any that had like, like popping issues, like that were just blowing power heads left and right? Mm. Maybe the early L6? Yeah. I mean, the early L6. The exhaust was a little bit lower, so um, there were people that would, like, have it jump time. Well, that's a whole other issue, is that the engine would jump time. So, Mm -hmm. it would, if you lost oil pressure at all, it's a tensioner that had oil that kept the chain tension for the timing of the engine. And if that, you lost oil pressure or anything like that or had, you know, a problem... Those engines, like those first generations, they were known for jumping time, coming off waves, unloading the engine and loading it back up like it would, they could jump time. So that was a whole problem all and of its own. But blowing power heads, I mean, a lot of those were abusive blows or mm-hmm. it would ingest water. Um, yeah, I assume they have to be, I mean, definitely abuse related because, you know, I'm, I can't speak to the early L6s, but if there's a motor that can take abuse, it's that L6. I mean, they t- I, I say it too much, but they take abuse like nothing I've ever seen, dude. I think you're you're all about reliability right now, like talking about reliability. Well, I think we should just keep yeah. covering the unreliable stuff first. You're right. And then, so like, okay, early, another thing, or like Yamahas, because, I mean, we talk about a lot about Yamaha and reliability, just like the L6. But like the 02 to 04 um, V6s, the 3.3 three liters, those engines, the exhaust manifolds would rot out. That was a big problem for a long time. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I didn't like those early 3.3s either with the ITBs. They were just, mm-hmm. they were just dogs. I mean, they were just heavy. Those loud. were another thing. The those you'd have to have to sync and link the individual mm-hmm. throttle vial, valves or the individual throttle bodies. They, yeah. yep, you'd have to get out that vacuum to sync those. So those could those could be a pain. But I don't think you had as many problems with those. The biggest issue with those were the exhaust manifolds rotting out. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, they didn't have much. They weren't that powerful i mean they were you know they everybody called them the old girls or the old dogs because they're you know this big heavy engine that you didn't really get the same amount of power like you know especially when the l6 hit the market you're talking about this supercharged engine that's got all this power mm-hmm. so 
Um, the F-350, the Yamaha F-350. That's right. That one had a lot of flywheel problems, right? Mm-hmm. I what mean... Was, what was the problem with those? Why did they go through flywheels like that? Was It, it was only the early ones, too, right? No, all of them. All of them? All had of them. A, oh, you know what? Now that you mention it, they have like a, like a flywheel timing counter on the software don't they yep i think it's code 80 i think um yeah no no one would probably say it but in my opinion the so the the flywheel has a balancer on it it's like this big rubber thing Mm -hmm. and the problem is that it you know i would say that the engine is harmonically unbalanced because if you run an engine between i think it's like 38 to 4200 rpms for over 80 hours it harmonically is unbalanced and that harmonic balancer on top of the flywheel will split and it will actually shred that thing and like throw the it'll 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 shred that balancer off and then throw the balancer off it'll rip it off and just blast it out like tear it up jeez so it, it i mean it's a con it's what a, kind of damage would that cause depends on how bad how fast i mean if you're running 5,800 RPM, and that thing comes flying off of there. It's a balancer, so it's heavy. Right. Um, it's just going to blow right through the cowling. You're like, just <laughs> it, <laughs> sent to the stratosphere type of it, deal? Or? I don't know if I've, I don't, I've never heard any <laughs> of them coming out of the cowling, but, you know. What was the service interval on those 80 flywheels? hours. 80, 80 hours? You had to replace them every 80 hours? Mm-hmm. Holy Maybe it was crap. 72. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I think it was code 80, but it could be code I mean, 72. Still, like, a flywheel can't be cheap either. Mm-mm. So they you're having to replace them. a flywheel. Oh, did they warranty yeah. every single one of them yeah, for the in rest the, of that engine's well, life? In the early years, you had to replace the engine computer and the flywheel. So the early years didn't have the counter in there. So you had to change the ECU that then allowed it to have that counter that would notify the operator of when they were ran that long in that RPM range, which is cruising speed. I mean, everybody cruises around 4,000 RPM. Okay, so it's only, so it's every 80 hours in a certain RPM range. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. That makes a little more sense then. Cause I was like, man, if you're having to replace that thing every 80 hours, that's before your hundred hours. Service mm-hmm. every no. Time. That's- no, I mean, if you ran the engine wide open throttle all the time, never have a problem. That's why I say it's a, it sounds like a, you know, a balancing issue, like whatever it is yeah. in that RPM range that would make a vibration or whatever that would mm-hmm. throw that, or maybe it was the flywheel as a problem, but I kind of feel like if it was really the a flywheel problem, it would happen at all. Well, not, not only that, but you would be able to manufacture a different flywheel that didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Who'd have thought of that? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I don't know, but that engine, would you say that that's an unreliable engine? Because not really. I mean, I, think, I don't know, man. I only know one unreliable Yamaha, and it's the HPDI 250 to 300. Like, or was it 250 to 300? Or just that that HPDI. It's it's mm-hmm. it's the only Yamaha I've ever heard bad things about. Yeah. Like I said, I don't personally like working on Yamahas too much. I'll work on them, and I like me a Yamaha. You know, I'm not gonna, but. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm pegging Mercury over Yamaha, it's Mercury. I've never mm-hmm. heard anything bad about about Yamaha's reliable reliability wise. Every person you talk to, what's the most reliable outboard there is? Yamaha, hundred <laughs> percent. Now a lot of people are starting to say Suzuki, but I think the price tag is affecting that <laughs> that decision. Yeah, a I, little bit. I think I think they're they're factoring in reliability for the price. And they're right. Like, they're like, bro, go with the Suzuki. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like a hundred percent. Yeah. But as far as you mean, I could say fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> so if you like this clip, you can watch the full podcast over here, or you can watch another clip over here.